Oh, hello there. This is French, Frenchy, aka Luda Frenchy Monette, and you are listening to Norn Consultations. Now, on with me, as per usual, Mr. Soda, and we also have one of the rookies in the draft, Beth May. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, of course. It's always great to talk to, to new people we don't actually know all that well, so this is pretty cool. Yeah. And and one thing common, we love the Schmodown. Awesome. Now. Talk, talking about Schmodown, how did you discover it? What was your first initiation? So uh, my friend Frank is uh, is associated with the Schmodown. I didn't meet him until uh, quarantine. And uh, so all of our roommates have been collectively huddled around the TV watching some trash reality TV that we're super into. And then also Schmodown. And when Frank, uh, Frank, like, uh, first things first, like one of the sweetest guys. Like uh, I'm so excited to have him in my group of friends this year. It's been really uh, great to help me get through all the chaos. And uh, when he told me it's like, yo, it's movies meets professional wrestling, I was like, heck yeah. Like, I, I work in. Uh, I'm not a wrestling fan, but I did box a little bit in college. Okay. And they're kind of adjacent, you know. They're yeah. a little bit. They're a little bit similar. You Both hurt. Talk- <laughs> you both just both absolutely can shredded and hurt in both of them, so that's great. Um, and uh, I work in the entertainment industry, and so I love movies. And uh, yeah, you know, put them all together, it just makes sense. Peanut butter jelly yeah. situation, yeah. And ha- ha- have you had any experience with movie trivia before that? Like, do you know exactly? Uh, not, not do you know exactly, but do you have any experience in that kind of sport? Uh, as a sport, no. Although I feel like it's a pretty big sport. If like you're in a situation where you're in a car playing like Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, and you need to get the words Morgan Freeman out immediately, and then like your brother's next to you, and he might, yeah. So I think, I mean, in terms like that, super competitive, and uh, and I I know a lot about movies, having gone to film school and stuff like that. So uh, I have never participated in any combative competitive form of that but i'm not even bar trivia? sorry what not even bar trivia no i oh. that's like one thing that i'm super excited about so if you know the world ever stops ending to to go mm. out and do bar trivia although i heard it's like it's super stressful like in a way that maybe this even isn't i've just heard horror stories of people going with their boyfriends and finding the worst elements of them when yeah they I, get i've been known them. I've been known to piss off a few judges for pointing out that they used the wrong answer. <clears throat> worst, worst offense was when the question was, who is the Beatles original drummer? And I was the only one to answer Pete Best and I got it wrong. Damn. No, that would be infuriating. I wouldn't know the answer, but I would be infuriated for you. So. Yeah. <laughs> so if I understand uh, correctly, you're a type of player that you say you have really good memory recall. Uh, you're quick and you can, you're able to access those little files uh, to have the answer when needed. I don't think uh, I, I don't think I'm necessarily the quickest. And I yeah, I just want to be transparent about that. But I do think I have like a knowledge base that's pretty broad and then also specific in categories like uh, horror thriller and um, directors Spielberg. I know a lot about Natalie Portman. I think I could be a pretty good um asset in terms of like those weird niche questions that might come up that other people might miss or whatever but uh ultimately i'm not the fastest gun in the west i'm the funnest gun you know what i'm saying <laughs> yes definitely we could definitely use a lot more fun in the schmodown um <laughs> yeah what was, what was the movie that was like okay i want to be a part of this um i so i always <laughs> say that like the movie that made me love movies was Jurassic Park. And then the movie that made me want to make movies was the sixth sense. Oh, okay. um, because uh, the idea that you could hold somebody's emotions like in your hand like that, and then be able to, to like switch it on them, do the twist and still find it emotionally fulfilling. I think that's incredible. I think it's like one of uh, the best assets that any sort of writer or filmmaker could have. So uh, yeah, that's the one that really spoke to me. So Beth likes to play with people's emotions. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Wrapping them all up in my web. <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> all right. And look for, for obviously we know now that uh, the, the managers are looking at these, uh, these episodes. Uh, 
what is the top three things you think they should know about you uh, coming into the draft and seeing if they're a fit with their team? Um, I think primarily I'm, I think as I've gotten more confident in who I am and whom I project into the world, I think I'm fun to be around. So ultimately I think if managers are looking to be participating in both a sport and a community event like you want somebody that you're down with in your community and somebody who's going to lift your community up and like just be a good part of a team I think that's like my best asset is that like I think that I'm a good friend and I think that I'm a good teammate and so that's kind of uh I think numero uno there uh and number two I'm like I'm a very hard worker. I guess there, there's not, there are very few things that I was born good at. And to be honest, there's a very few things that I am good at now, but the things that I am good at, I've gotten good at by working really hard and doing a lot of research and stuff like that. So I'm, uh, the weaknesses I might have now might not be the weaknesses I have in two weeks. I might have new weaknesses. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, number three, like, I'm I'm really adaptable. I like uh, so I come from an acting and writing background, and so obviously this is kind of just me being me right now. But um, I think because the Schmodown is a form of entertainment, and there's like this heightened reality, like competitive aspect to it. Yeah, if I find a, a team that needs a certain character, I can absolutely find that role and be that person. So yeah. Um, so how much of knowledge have you tried to pry from Frank about what it's like being in the Schmodown? <laughs> you know, it's like his his world is like so different. It's like very because when I met him, I assumed that he wanted to like work in film too or whatever. Um, hmm. and so but then when I found out, actually I still don't know like what his you know what his dream is being frank and he's accomplishing that dream every single day because yeah there's only that. definitely one frank and uh yeah friend of the show frank janish everybody just so in case you guys are wondering <laughs> adam twice like, yeah um <laughs> no, like uh i i just hear him getting really excited about things and then that's you know mostly like in his room and then when he's out with the rest of us uh in the common area it's just like hey you want to watch this this match or whatever and then um sometimes he'll explain to me the, the sort of background on the the drama and the episodes but i actually know very little about all of that so oh, okay. i think uh frank has been great about introducing schmodown into my life but in terms of like the the nitty-gritty of it i, I i'm of the mindset right now that i'm studying sort of the history as a matter of respect but right now my focus is on getting uh, better at trivia itself so right so, on that being said um on your on your uh, your opinion a level of one to ten where one is very low ten is very high where do you do you think your strategy uh, gameplay for what you saw uh, would stand on that scale strategy i think <clears throat> um i think it's definitely going to come down to what uh division whether like singles or teams i would be in if drafted fingers uh -huh. crossed i think that um i'm a pretty strategic person um so i but i'm also a pretty not strategic person this is a great answer i'm gonna go with five <laughs> all right so you're in the middle um yeah. <laughs> all right so so what i understand really you're you you bring character, you bring experience in bringing characters to life. You are very moldable. You don't necessarily have the, the strategy or the game uh, completely wrapped up, but you are a type of person who can learn very quick and if shown properly, could evolve very quickly to the point that they are essential to the, the faction. Did I recap it pretty well? Yeah, no, you made me sound really fabulous. Thank you. Um, I, I think like in terms of strategy, I think strategy, an important part of strategy is being able to form a different strategy for every single match that you're in. So I think mm -hmm. that it's like uh, looking at it very amorphously, it's hard to say I've, I've got good strategy, but I think, you know, when it comes down to it, looking at uh, whatever thing is five steps ahead of me i can you know do the first step and figure out what's next so um has anybody reached out to you and said like okay you got to watch like this match or this match like what was the one what were the, some of the matches that people point you to say watch this to kind of get an idea um literally none of the like i uh 
I think Frank would talk about sort of the differences in the Schmodown uh, from like when it was at Collider a few years ago and stuff like that. So it was really interesting for me to go back like four years and and look at some of those matches and how the questions vary from the ones that are today. But in terms of like big, heavy hitter, important matches, I haven't been uh, directed to any of those specifically. That said, like I've been watching like a ton of matches. And while I've been focusing definitely more on the questions rather than sort of the the drama behind it, I feel like that's making me a little bit more uh, just like stronger question mm. trivia wise. So, yeah. Is, is there one person in particular, like you said, you're watching a bunch of matches now. Is there one person in particular you find yourself gravitating towards more to in terms of like being a fan? Um, I've had the incredible pleasure and honor of e-meeting Video Drew because I just think that she, she brings like so much, uh, so much wild energy to the table, and she's, uh, she's a surprise like every time. I, I uh, and just one of the most generous, nicest people ever, and uh, somebody who's playing a very different character on Schmodown yeah. than she is in real life, and just like. Uh, yeah, I just don't have uh, enough good things to say about her. So that's, yeah, that's one person, definitely. She's right probably on. one of the best character players, oh, you know. God, yeah. he, he has some good ones, heightened versions. And, you know, Tom is also a, another exception. But she invented almost in a way creating a whole brand new, like, character herself and always sticking to it and, and evolving the character. It went from just awkward to, like, funny ass bits with like handing out the, the oil to the machine and there's so many things that, that she's done uh, I'm happy I, I honestly with- don't know though if you could ever beat how do you spell cat <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you know, you know, also I'll say uh, to her credit is that I think with a show like Schmodown that is continually trying to include more people be more diverse and inclusive I think it's important to to have a lot of women on the show that are not necessarily being themselves, like n- no, um, no shade or whatever to people who are going to be like explicitly themselves and yeah. more light on the character side. But I think, uh, I, I think as a society, we tend to let like guys get away with more like being the, the wild weirdo who doesn't necessarily have to be the good looking, uh, uh, champion. Whereas women, I think are more pressured to be sort of, uh, if funny, then good looking and funny. So it's, I think it to bring in uh, a lot of women who are perhaps doing characters that would otherwise be done by men, maybe. I think that's like a really cool uh, thing to establish and something to have a lot of going forward. Mm. And that's one of the things I like most about Harloff is he, he's a damn good promoter. He knows, okay, this person's got some, doesn't matter gender or uh, background or anything like that. It's like, I think they're going to do good, and he gives them a shot. Now, talking about character and, and you know, building yourself something, uh, if Harloff would say, hey, Beth May, I trust her. Uh, I will let you choose if you want to be a heel, a face, or an in-between. Uh, what direction would you personally go if Harloff would give you the, the, the green card? Um, the green light, Lou. The green. She lives in the ah, it's green card. Card. <laughs> I know. I kind of want to go to Canada sometimes. Um, hey, we got plenty of room. <laughs> um, I I think I'm leaning face right now. I I would be very blessed to be drafted and be either. But I what I'm toying with character wise, and if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. Is uh being like uh uh somebody who is uh more of my heightened optimism, not competitive. I think it'd be funny to have somebody who's like, yo, I think we should just have a good clean game here. No curses, no swearing. Let's just support yeah. each other. Yeah. Like, I think that would be kind of a funny thing yeah. to do, but, um, and you could play that both heel and face and it would work the yeah. same. You could literally play it the same way, both sides and it'll work. Yeah. It just, uh, yeah, just something weird like that is what really springs to mind because I, I am just kind of looking to do something a little bit different that still works within yeah. the schmo down box. Yeah. And um, excluding maybe, you know, Janish and Harloff, if there was one person you could sit down or a whole day and completely pick their brain uh, strategy wise and character wise, everything that envelops a schmo down, who would you pick to really pick completely hundred percent of their brain? Um, 
probably Winston. I, I mm-hmm. talked to him briefly and uh, I think he strikes me as somebody who sees all of his players as the whole player and can really pick their strengths and their weaknesses and uh, and develop them to have less of the weaknesses, more of the strengths, be more of a team player, somebody who sees the the player as a person first. And I think I, that's something I really respect in, uh, because ultimately games are for having fun. And yeah, mm-hmm. we can be competitive and stuff like that, but these are hard times and we need to have something to sort of look forward to and not be super stressed out of our gourds about. So yeah. At- do you have a question, Zona? No, go right ahead, dude. What's more important to you, uh, the entertainment uh, valor, uh, value or winning? I know <laughs> it's supposed to be fun, but the rest of you got like uh, um, you got the the wild. Yes, if you're if you're a sore loser or a good winner. <laughs> no, no, I, no. What I'm asking is, you got like uh, you got late to the party. You got wild berries. You got um, uh, real rejects. They're there for the fun. If they win, you're a uh, but if they lose, hey, we got a we we gave an amazing performance, and then you got the Rokas who are gonna set the, the the whole building on fire if they lose, right? So, uh, what to. are you more leaning to towards the uh, type of player? I am I'm leaning more towards entertainment. I mean, this is it, you know, uh, fittingly, this is the entertainment industry, and that's something I always wanted to do was to tell stories and whatever uh, cheesy stuff I can come up with. But I've always wanted to entertain people in, in some capacity and uh, to do it through this medium would be really cool and uh, a lot of fun and then very competitive. But I think ultimately I'm just here to put on a show. Yeah, well, right on. And it sounds like you've got a good uh, supporting crew around you to do this. And because, I mean, heck, the Schmodown community is a uh, hands down one of the best communities I've ever been involved in. Absolutely. I've, I, I've just stepped a tippy toe into this, in this big old pool. And I've been, uh, I've just been blown away by the amount of, um, one, like diversity in terms of why the schmodown is important to some people. There's just like all kinds of things that draw people to it, which is really incredible. And then, uh, I think everybody has a place and I feel like there aren't many fandoms like that anymore. Definitely not. No, it's it's hard to find. Like, hey, if uh, most people never met him, and if in one day we, we, uh, the whole community was able to raise over ten grand just to help someone, oh, which well, is yeah. Kevin Smets. I mean, we're all unified by by Schmodown, but like, I have never met him, and you know, a lot of people gave money, including me, just to help out the guy because we care, right? Yeah. That is hard to find. Yeah. That is really hard to find. Now, um, Soda, um, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, I wanted to have our predictions on who's going to draft a best right. way. Let's say oh. it's a done deal, right? Uh, I'm going to start with you, Soda. Who do you think, in your gut feeling, after understanding a bit who she is, having her profile, who do you think is the perfect fit? So I'm torn between two, so I'm going to name them both. Winston, which is already talked about, and actually, I think you would uh, have a fun time with Sam on the suspects. See, for me, it's clear as day, and it's it fits like a glove. And I have a hard time fitting other uh, other um, other factions. Is the quirky Mercs? You and Corey, oh, yeah. you want fun? You want positive? You want something? You know that you know will will heighten that optimism. Koi is your man to do that, and he has a solid team around him. Yeah. Like seeing you in a promo with a kid in the bibs, oh man, that would be awesome. Yeah, you know what? I gotta take my. I never thought of the marks to be honest. I gotta take my back. I think you would have the most fun with them. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm gonna. I I think that if the fit fits, then it's right, and I'm gonna have fun. And uh, I I would be really really excited and honored to be drafted by honestly anybody i i don't feel like i'm in a place to afford to be picky and mm-hmm. so um it's yeah i'd be just absolutely ecstatic to be drafted period and you know even if i'm not it's like been great just like meeting people like you and being able to sit down and do stuff like that so yeah yeah honestly like we've only been doing this a year as i was pointed out our very first promo came out like what is it a year ago this upcoming weekend or some of that yeah, it's sunday yeah, and that's you're right. Like it's it, we're very fortunate to be able to do do things like this. I honestly can't remember what my life was like before this. It, it's it's a it's a fun fun problem to have. 
A lot of free time, Soda. That what it was. A lot of free time. <laughs> I'm convinced with the amount of matches Harloff's asking, uh, adding, he's secretly trying to kill off this current batch of reactors. Because <laughs> we almost we almost collapsed during the tournaments, and now it's going to be a permanent thing. <laughs> Harloff, I just had a baby. You can spare me, man. Please spare me. Baby, congrats. Thank That's you. awesome. Uh, and I'm hopeless and awkward and desperate for love, so don't kill me just yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now, uh, Soda, is there anything else you want to pick? Uh, pick Beth May's uh, brain? Not, not quite. I think it's time we probably get into the, some of the questions we usually ask. All Soon. right. So one thing that we're asking now for for the rookie or in the draft list is to pick another rookie. And give it your best. Show the, the, the managers what you got promotion wise versus a competitor. So up to you. Okay. okay. This is going to be pretty tough and pretty, uh, it, you know, it might cross some lines. Should we go full screen on you for this? Go full <laughs> screen. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. All right. Not that All one. Right. I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Hey, We're getting the there. We're getting there. Okay. Listen, rookies. I'm not calling out anybody individually because that would put the attention on you and I want the attention on me. I will say that uh, I think that you've gotten this far, then that means you're in a pretty good place. It means you're in a place with eyes on you. It means you're in a place where somebody's noticed your talent and said, hey, that could be some quality entertainment, but probably not as entertaining as me when I'm having a good time. And so... Uh, I think I would have a good time doing the schmo down. So listen, I would talk trash to all of you guys, but I really just wish you the best and not as good as me, but I wish you the best. And I know that these are hard times and this is a cool thing to look forward to. So see you on draft day, rookies. All right. All right. I, I, like all right. I also appreciate your brand of headphones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 all right so thank you very much for for the promo um now we are curious and we, tough, yeah <laughs> uh, and we are curious this is something we asked everybody uh since first episode except the first iteration is what are you gonna do if you die so that was a bit too dramatic so we changed <laughs> it up a bit yeah and then uh, COVID hit and it's like well it's a little too yeah too cool. <laughs> um so what we're gonna ask today is if aliens come on earth and be like we're taking all your movies but they're nice enough to actually give us a week notice what is your last three movies you would watch um okay so was thinking about this early today and i think about this a lot because i'm always switching around like what are my top 10 movies or whatever but um i'm gonna like pervert your question and frame it in a way that like what i think are the most I important away. Re- <laughs> the, like <laughs> uh i think like what are the most important movies to filmmaking that maybe aren't some of the more well-known ones a la uh you know the godfather etc so i think like number one I would pick uh, El Mariachi because oh, okay. I think that I think that uh, it's one of those movies of uh, guerrilla indie filmmaking that even today is like a lightning rod for people maybe like me who are starting out in the entertainment mm-hmm. industry to realize like you can create your own stories and you can uh, you can be part of this thing that you love. So I think that's that's number one. Well, that um, one that movie's had that reputation since it came out. Like, yeah, uh, like Kevin Smith and what have you. Yeah, that's a good choice. Um, I think uh, now my choices are going to get a little weird. I would also pick uh, Moulin Rouge because it's a it's a movie oh. that is just completely bonkers. One of my favorites of all the, time. The soundtrack um, is. I, is I, I, I love it, and it's like I yeah, it's just a huge part of who I am. For I have a little bit of a story involved in that. I didn't watch it for the first time until two years ago. Um, I had to rewatch it the next day because I got so drunk watching it. I didn't remember finishing it. And I woke up that next morning with my pants in the middle of the living room. <laughs> well, that's a good problem to have as long as you keep watching it. Um, <laughs> I, the, I think that's a, that's a very important movie in terms yeah. of, uh, of realizing that there is something for everybody. And there's like things that will just not appeal to other people, but that, you know, movies can uh, inspire people within the, the niches that they mm. occupy. And uh, number three, this one's really weird, but I would pick um, I would pick Shame, <laughs> um, <laughs> The Queen Shame, which is, it, it, I know, a weird choice, but I will say that I think uh, movies also have the power to 
portray things that are very difficult and taboo in a way that can reach out to people, um, you know, whether or not they've actually experienced those things and reach out and give them a slice of life that they would otherwise never experience. So those are El Mariachi, Mulan Rouge, and Shame are my three. I, I love this question. Really weird. I love this question so much because everybody brings a different perspective to it. Like honestly, like me and Daniel were talking earlier and we honestly don't think that there's been a movie that's been mentioned more than once. No, I oh, really wow, don't think awesome. so. Yeah, we've been doing everything for a year. So. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's been different. It's really cool to hear everybody's uh, perspective on, uh, well, this question and movies in general. Now I am curious. You did say Moulin Rouge. Um, what is your favorite song of the whole movie? Ooh. Um, Let's see. My friend swears by Roxanne. Uh, I, you know, I, I think in terms of like both the sound and like what's going on on screen, Roxanne just like really mm. takes the cake for me because there's just so much going on. It, 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 uh, it's a way to break into Act Three in this way that's like, like everything is going on, and I, I think that, uh, yeah, that's. I mean, but you got Elephant Love, Melody. You got Come One May. You yeah. got like a verse. Like everything is just incredible in that movie. Me, it's um, the show must go on. Yeah. Uh, that seems like that operatic. In the worst part is, I did not know it was a Queen song. I knew a bit of like, really? a, a, yeah, I knew a I, lot of Queen, I, but I, I didn't realize it was, it was Queen. Queen either. Dude, um, and that that song, the story of the recording of that song, is one of my favorite music stories of all time because Freddie Mercury was dying when he did that. And he walks in, he's, you know, he's frail. He doesn't have the energy. The Brian May, who's the who's producing, it was like, look, man, you can you do this? If Freddie drowns one shot of vodka, says, well, let's do this, darling. And he hits it in one take. And he's dying of AIDS. This is like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Now, on that depressing note, <laughs> all right. Well, look, Beth May, thank you so much for, for taking your time to be on Norton Consultations. We wish you the luck. You probably won't need it, but we're still going to give it yeah. to you. Thank uh, you so if, much. If uh, managers want to directly talk to you, if you know future wa fans want to talk to you or reach out to you, where can they find you? Okay, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Hey Beth May. That's the at sign. <laughs> and then Hey, like you're saying hi, Beth, like my first name, May, uh, like the month. And um, yeah, so I'm on Twitter and Instagram. I'm also, if anybody's into podcasts, specifically comedy podcasts, specifically comedy D D podcasts, which is <gasps> kind of a small, <laughs> a small small amount of people. But I am on a podcast called Dungeons and Daddies, which is not a BDSM podcast, but it's a podcast about four dads from our world who are flung into the okay. forgotten realm okay. on so a quest. My best friends swear by that podcast. That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Well, tell them that I appreciate their listenership. And so do the rest <laughs> of the dads. I play a stepfather named Ron Stampler. Have a great time doing that show. And you can Google it and find us on yeah, Apple right, Podcasts or whatever. Right now. <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a small, funny world, man. It is. It absolutely is. Um, but this has, been, this has been so exciting. Thank you guys for having me on. Of course. And Soda, where can I find you? Except for uh, chasing a friend. All over the internet. Uh, not just here on this show and on Schmoes of the North, uh, Schmodown 9 Canada. You can also find me on my other YouTube channel, Get Sweaty. We have a variety of shows. Uh, there's Recap in the Past with me and my friend Ben. We review old sitcoms. We just are wrapping up Saved by the Bell. Thank God. Um, that that track listing on all the different platforms sucks. It's hard to figure out what the order is sometimes. Um, and then you's also uh, shooting the breeze where we just sit down kind of like this and just talk for about an hour about whatever. And also get sweaty, which is our top five show on um, whatever we want to, whatever we list we want to break down. This up uh, the previous one was top five Disney songs. All right. And you can find me on the Twitter sphere on Norton Schmoes, the official uh, Schmoes of North Twitter. You can also find me um, on Saturday, uh, speaking of Schmo Down, uh, producing and also giving my Frenchies corner thoughts. And this Saturday as well, do not miss, and I mean do not miss, uh, the Frenchie talks about. I have Amanda Savine, uh, who is a, a very big up-and-coming uh, woman of uh, fitness world. She went from almost starving and, and weak and anorexic to a bodybuilder so her uh, her story is amazing and you cannot miss it out all mm. right so thank you very much oh bonsoir salute <laughs>